What's up everyone, my name is Kaushik and I'm a medical student at the National University of Singapore. I just completed my auto rhino laryngology posting. I hope I got that right. Also known as ear, nose, throat or ENT for short. During my posting, I saw a lot of patients who came to the hospital for reasons that could have been totally prevented. And in this video, I wanted to share with you five things that you can do or not do that will keep you out of the hospital, at least concerning ENT. I really believe that prevention is better than cure. And so, here we go. Number one, don't dig your ears with cotton buds or Q-tips. So this is something that I've always done as well and I found out how bad it actually is. You see, the ear has a self-cleaning mechanism and you really shouldn't be putting anything inside of it, especially a cotton bud. You might be using these to clear ear wax from your ears, but what you might actually be doing is pushing the ear wax deeper inside and making it harder for your ears to get rid of it naturally. This can lead to ear wax being built up right near your eardrum and making it harder for you to hear over time. And also because ear wax or cerumen if any of my profs are watching this serves a very important function of keeping your ears dry without water or moisture. So this prevents bacteria and fungi setting up shop in your ear canals and by getting rid of the ear wax, you're actually making the ears a lot more conducive for these pathogens to settle in and that's how you end up with ear infections which obviously isn't fun at all. Also, there are some people who use the ear buds so vigorously that they end up perforating their eardrum and this leads to hearing loss as well. You can use the ear buds to clean the outside of the ears or if the wax has already come out of your ear canals but do not put it inside. So the ENT specialists recommend their patients to clean their ears after taking a shower by using a towel and not put anything inside the ear canal. But if you think you have a lot of ear wax built up in your ears, what you can do is to put in two drops of olive oil and let the ear wax come out naturally. Number two, it's about the importance of nasal breathing. When we talk about staying healthy, we often talk about exercising, having a balanced diet, sleeping well, and drinking enough water. But there's one thing that we do all the time that we don't quite pay enough attention to, and that's breathing. Breathing is essential for life, and there's actually a right way to breathe, and that's through your nose. In fact, poor breathing can lead to many health complications like hypertension, obesity, insomnia, and chronic stress. Breathing through the nose is how the body was designed to breathe, and breathing through our mouth is as practical as trying to eat through our nose. Your nose plays some very important roles when it comes to breathing, like warming and humidifying the air that you breathe, filtering dust and other harmful particles from entering your body, and also has receptors that affect your heart rate and nervous system. There is a reason why in yoga and other meditative practices, you're encouraged to take in a deep breath through the nose to relax your body. Nasal breathing also promotes a slower breathing rate, which has shown to have health benefits and improves longevity. There's a folklore in Africa that we are born with a fixed number of breaths and the faster we breathe, the faster we expire. There is an ongoing evolutionary phenomenon where the size of our jawbone has been shrinking over the past 12,000 years. And scientists believe that one of the big contributors to this is because of oral breathing. And beyond not having a sharp jawline, this also leads to other problems like obstructive sleep apnea. Because your jaw is moving further and further back, this makes it harder for you to breathe when you're sleeping. Some ENT specialists even call obstructive sleep apnea the hidden epidemic because it leads to other health problems like diabetes, hypertension, and a whole bunch of other stuff that you don't want. When you breathe in through your mouth, you also lose more water and this leads to dehydration. So the moral of the story is to breathe through your nose as far as possible. But of course, if your nose is blocked, please breathe through your mouth and don't suffocate yourself. Number three, don't hold in your sneeze. There is a bad habit that I have and that is to hold in my sneeze by pinching my nose. 
sometimes when I'm out and I don't like to sneeze loudly, I usually just pinch my nose and try to hold my sneeze in. But I found out that this is actually a really, really bad practice. Because the ear, nose and throat are connected by air spaces, hence ENT, if you didn't know, when you hold the sneeze in, you create a lot of pressure in these air spaces that has to be released somehow. And this pressure ends up going to your ears, which has the smallest bones in your body and some of the most intricate nerves and blood vessels. The pressure can damage these structures and can lead to some really unwanted consequences. Sneezing is a natural reflex that tries to get rid of allergens and other particles that might be irritating your airways. So if you have to sneeze, just cover your mouth and sneeze away to get rid of it. Don't try to hold your sneeze in by pinching your nose. Number four, nosebleeds. So for the longest time, I believed that if you had a nosebleed, you had to pinch the nose bridge and tilt your head backwards. And so did many of my classmates. But it turns out this is actually really bad and it can lead to the person choking on their own blood. Instead, what you want to do is to pinch the part of your nose that is below your nose bridge and not tilt backwards. This is the part of the nose that is called the littles area and this is where most of the nose bleeds occur from. So by applying pressure to this area, you can stop the bleeding and help the blood clot. And if the nosebleed is really bad, you can suck on an ice cube and this should help slow down the bleeding. The cold temperature should constrict the blood vessels and cause the bleeding to slow down. So yeah, hopefully next time when you or your friend has a nosebleed, you know what to do. And number five, use headphones. Now I know how popular earbuds like AirPods are these days and I use them myself. But what I found out is that using these AirPods that sit inside of your ears for long durations can actually cause a lot more damage than you'd want. Similar to using earbuds that push in your ear wax in deeper, using AirPods can do the same. I'm not saying stop using them entirely. I actually love these, especially when I'm in the gym or when I'm traveling. But try to limit the number of hours that you use them every single day. You shouldn't be keeping these inside your ears for more than a couple of hours. And the alternative to that is to use headphones that do not sit inside of your ears. Now I'm not trying to promote any brand over here, but try to get yourself a comfortable pair of headphones if you're trying to listen to music for more than two hours at a stretch. Not only does it sound a lot better, but it will also do your ears a huge favor. All right, so those are the five things that hopefully should keep you away from the ENT clinic. I think the doctor of the future is one who keeps patients away from the hospitals on top of helping them when the need arises. Obviously, there are some diseases that you can't totally prevent and you should really go to the hospital when that happens. But as far as possible, it's better for us to stay away from the hospital to save ourselves some trouble as well as some money. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such content. Until my next video, peace. All right, let's go.